This is a handy accessory, a bench, workbench accessory. It's for sawing with a handsaw, and it's very convenient for small items. And I will show how to construct this accessory in SketchUp. Recently, I've been using this quite a bit in my work. I'm building a tambour secretary and it has these sliding tambour doors and this one is open and you can see how it folds around as it follows the groove in the cabinet. Uh, and each of these tambour doors is made up of about 50 slats, thin slats. There's a couple of them up here on the top. And I use this bench hook to uh, cut the length of the rough pieces. You just hold that piece up against the fence here and use a, a saw. I'm using a Japanese saw, but any saw will do. Uh, and it doesn't require any kind of clamping or uh, you aren't turning on some power tool to do this. You can very quickly saw right to the mark because the mark it can be lined up with this edge on this fence for a very accurate cut. You can see all these little cutoffs that I've been doing in making these slats all at the same length. So the design of this, here's the orthographic drawing with a front view and then a top view and an end view. There are only three pieces. There's the hook that, uh, that slams up against the edge of the bench and then there's the fence and the base. And here are some of the critical dimensions. So how would you go about building this in SketchUp? It's quite an easy uh, design. And I'm going to change out from the parallel projection to a perspective view. And I would start out with making the base. And I'll use the line tool to start one of the edges on the green axis. And the dimension, the depth dimension is 12 inches. These bench hooks can be made any size. It, uh, they could be a little bit smaller than the one I have here, uh, but uh, this is the one, this is the sizing that I made when I first did this. And I'm on the red axis now and I'm typing in 11 inches, so it's 11 by 12. Coming back on the green axis, I'll just kind of touch the end there and get that inference and then I can click and come across and I've got a rectangle the size of that base. And I want to make this a component right now. So I'm double clicking, right clicking, and picking make, make component. And I'll call this uh, base one create. So when I click on it now, the whole face um, the, uh, lights up and I can edit that component 
and use the push pull tool to raise up to the thickness which is uh, one inch. It, the, this dimension isn't the fixed. Uh, you could use three quarter. I used one inch and I used maple for building this. I wanted hard heavy material and and ma maple works very well for this. I notice I'm in back edges mode. I'm just going to click that off. And so now I have a component that's one inch thick, 12 inches deep, and um, 11 inches uh, long this way. So that's the, that's the base. Now the, the fence goes back here and the end of the fence is one inch from the outer edge here. So I picked the tape measure tool. I'm going in the red axis and I'm typing one inch and so that's where that fence should end. This time I'll pick the rectangle tool and click on this end here and then come up uh, on this on the green axis. I type the left arrow key to, uh, to to stop me here and now you can see down here in the dimensions lower right hand corner some dimensions. Well I want 10 inches exactly and I want this to be one and a half inch high. So I can type 10 comma one and one half and there's a face of that size. And the thickness, well at this point I'm going to make that a component. And I'm going to call that the fence one. And again, right click to edit the component and push pull tool and bring this back. And I made this fence also one inches. So I type one and return and I've got a one inch by one and a half inch fence and I can now delete this guideline. The only other part is the hook down here. The, the piece that grabs up against, uh, pushes up against the fence, the edge of, uh, the edge of the workbench. And again, I'll just use the rectangle and that goes clear across like this. And I want that to be three quarters of an inch thick. So I'll type 11 comma three quarter return. And I have the exact size of the hook and I'm going to make that component hook one and edit the component and push pull. This is uh, one, one, uh, one and three eighths is the dimension I have for this hook. One and three eighths. Now, the grain direction 
here should be lined up all three of these pieces the grain direction should be horizontal here you don't want to make this a vertical grain and then these are or vertical that or going the other cross grain because then you'll create a a cross grain uh, issue with expansion and contraction so it'd be best if the grain direction of the base is in this direction. You may have to glue up a piece to get the uh, 12 inches of width there. So I'm going to close that component and uh, work on how everything is fastened. Uh, but before I do that, I like to make a piece of furniture, all an assembly component. Make a component, and I'll call this assembly one. Uh, and and the joinery is just wood screws. In this case, with some glue, perhaps. Uh, just to make this easier to work, I'm going to copy. I use the move tool and then tap the control key or the option key in the Mac. Bring a copy over here and then I'll flip it on the blue axis so I can work on the bottom face here easily. And I want to put some wood screws in here. Uh, so I'm going to uh, take the tape measure tool. And I want a wood screw one inch from the edge here. And one inch from the edge here here and then I would like another screw at the center of that hook so I can tap the right arrow key to force this on the right a on, the, on the red axis and then find the midpoint see that green color now I'm at the midpoint and also I need a guideline that is at the midpoint in the green direction uh, right there. So I've got the location now for the three shank holes for the wood screws. Uh, now I need to edit the assembly but I need to edit the hook itself, edit component and with the circle tool I will click on the intersection there of the guidelines and I would say our number eight screw we need a 3 uh, diameter shank hole so I'll have a three I'm typing 330 seconds radius and I've got a do that again. It remembers the last one. And do that again over here. 330 seconds. And make that an actual hole with the push-pull tool. And push that down to the edge, bottom edge. Do the same double click there. It remembers the depth to go. I'll just turn on x-ray so you can see that those holes have been made 3 16 diameter holes in just the right place. I also like to show the center of the hole. Uh, it's easier to measure when you have centers 
identified and so I just say find center and that finishes the fastening of the uh, hook here. I can close the component, close the component and get rid of these guidelines. Now we need a similar uh, screws to fasten into this fence and I know I'm already uh, on the red axis I am typing the right arrow key and so there's the end of it and I would again like a guideline about one inch away from that for the first screw and one inch away from that side and then I'd like a guideline in the midpoint. I'm going to tap the right arrow key so it forces this guideline in the red axis and to find the center of the fence I just slide along until it catches right there. Uh, then the fence is one inch thick so I want to place the screws at a half an inch off the edge and I'm ready now to edit that's the assembly I want to edit the base and grab the circle tool and again 330 seconds is what I want 330 seconds 330 seconds and push pull down to this edge I'm double clicking now because it rem remembers the depth let's just look at it in x-ray and those, those are the shank holes for the wood screws uh, so I can get out of the close the component and close the component and then take the eraser hold it down and just sweep over Oh. I forgot to show the center points of these circles so I will edit the base again and right click find center right click find center right right click find center okay that's it this I don't need I don't need this assembly anymore so I can just delete that one the upside down assembly I've got this assembly which has all those wood screw holes and what I like to have and when I uh, make one of these drawings is to have an orthographic view and to make an orthographic view I will copy over down the right red axis with uh, one copy and then I'll make uh, another copy and rotate that 90 degrees clockwise 
make another copy up here on the blue axis and rotate that 90 degrees. I want that to be on the blue axis. And then go to a front view and I want to have camera in parallel projection. Now, I don't like that I've got this red axis going through my component. So I'm going to shift all these pieces up away from that red axis just a little bit. And now I've got a front view, and a top view, and an end view. And I can dimension, we said this was 12 inches. We said this was 11 inches. Here is a one inch. And the uh, height of the fence is one and a half. The height of the base is one. And the height of the uh, hook is three quarter. And let me just position that that way. Uh, the width of the hook, one and three eighths. The thickness of the fence is one. And we've already got that. We can also see where the wood screws. Now I'd like to have a style in my orthographic view. A style that is back edges. So uh, in my model I have a back edges style and I click on that and then I need to remember uh, remember that uh, in the orthographic uh, scene. Now I didn't I didn't make a scene. I already had one in here, but let's make another uh, scene, add a scene, and I'm going to call this orthographic one just to be different. So you see how uh, to set up these scenes. So now I've got orthographic one and I need to update that scene. I click here, update, and I click update here. And so there's the photos that we were looking at. There's the workbench scene with a bench hook on it. Oh, and I did put a little grain direction on here just to remind me about that. And then orthographic, the previous orthographic I had is here, and the new orthographic that we just made is here. Uh, now I see, yeah, so the other dimensions that can be identified here is to the locations of these screw shank holes, there's the one inch, and then to the middle is, oh, that's, that can't be right. Uh, let me zoom. When you dimension, you want to make sure that you're clicking on what you want. And that That's that's it right there. So that's a way of showing the shank hole locations.
and we've got a, a drawing that can be very quickly made in the shop. 